very much for being here this evening, and over to you. Well, I'm delighted to, to be here. Um, Holocaust Remembrance is immensely important, and we had uh, recently the uh, 25th um, anniversary a fundraising dinner. And, uh, very good. Prime Minister came to speak. Room was absolutely packed out. The testimony for survivors. I was really pleased, absolutely delighted to have been there. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll tweet about this because this is a wonderful thing. Oh my goodness. You should have seen the filth. Man, I'm not very popular on Twitter, I have to be my relatives. So. But <laughs> it was unbelievable. You have to find it, of course. Which one, of course? You know, uh, why are you always going on about the Jews? Etc. Et We've done enough of this. Time to forget. Let's move on. Even now, even having seen the horror of the 20th century, there are still people prepared to say this did not happen. And that's why this is so important. You know, um, there have been other genocides, of course there have. And what happened in Rwanda, what happened in, uh, in Shogunitsan, to talk to people that was absolutely dreadful. But there is something special about what happened in Central Europe in those narrow years of the 30s and the 40s. This was death on uh, an industrial scale. This was, this was a machine. Any of you that's been to, to Auschwitz or to any of the death camps, and uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, liberated uh, Belson, and I uh, will never forget, cannot help but understand what a terrible thing this was. And you know, if it had been committed by people from outer space, if it had been committed by some strange primitive tribe from God knows where, well, you kind of understand. But this was the Germans, the most civilized nations on earth. The, the, the country that produced Beethoven and Goethe, Schiller. How could they do this? How could that be allowed? And you know, you, you kind of walk through the whole process and you, you see the death camp and the like. And the thing that actually strikes you about it is its banality. It's actually... They managed to produce something that is absolutely pure. And the people who committed this were not monsters. They were like you and me. Don't get that smug feeling, I would never do this. This is within the human condition. You know, I remember uh, meeting with the director of, um, of Auschwitz, and uh, incredible man, he looks exactly like Orson Welles. I don't mean Orson Welles since I came, I mean Orson Welles towards the end, really big guy. Uh, had bury on his hand, and just for effect, he had a broken arm. Uh, the coach, and he said, um, we always wanted to talk to people who were there. And by and large, uh, people from Israel, people from America, uh, Europeans turn up. But there's a whole bunch of um, uh, South Korean tourists. And he thought, well, that's a bit strange. I've never really seen this South Korean scene before. So he went over and had a chat to them. Great, they have perfect English, and they said, Oh, well, you know, we've done Paris and we've done Rome, and uh, we thought we'd do Auschwitz. So this is a bit strange, you know, I can kind of understand why you might want to do all these places, but why do you do, why have you done Auschwitz? They said, Because we want to understand what European culture is all about. I thought that was ridiculous until he started to think, and I have to say, I enormous impression on me. It can happen again. The road to Auschwitz was taken by small steps. It can happen again. And uh, part of the stuff that we were paying for was um, the restoration of the shoes. If you've ever been there, this whole collection, is, there's a whole bunch of hair that's shaved up, which they're just going to allow to turn to dust, which I think is absolutely but there are shoes, and the real thing is, you could go out um, Manchester Piccadilly and see the same kind of shoes, and they are 
that there are clogs there, but there are very smart, put together, bespoke shoes. And the process of restoration was to bring them up to their shine. And it did occur to me that these, um, these shoes were never meant to walk to Auschwitz, to walk to the death camp. These shoes were meant to, uh, to, to accompany family picnics, to be on a lover's tryst, to be the enjoyment of life. And you see the photographs, and these were people who never started out uh, and said, um, you know, uh, today um, I'm going to go to school, then to university, and then I'm going to have a few years working in a factory, then I'm going to be exterminated by the Nazis. These people had a future that they took on. And the importance about this is that um, the testimony about the end must never be forgotten. And by listening to it, and by acting on it, it's another defeat for the Nazis. Because this is the voice the Nazis thought that it would destroy. This is a voice, both Eva's voice and the voice of her mother, was a voice that the Nazis thought they were going to destroy. And we must remember it. And the really important thing about the, the, the trust, I'm sorry, the, board, the really important thing about the trust is it ensures that the next generation understand. And the best thing about all this is that you're an ambassador of course, that are, are being able to take that message in. The Holocaust is just as relevant now as it's ever been. So it's a great pleasure. Thank you very much.